Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are in a little town called Winter Garden, a small suburb of Orlando. And what we're doing is we're going to be waterproofing the interior of a home. They actually have a crawl space and it looks just like any other crawl space. Uh, good, good head height, normal stuff. A um, lot of construction. You can see the new pool going in. Um, basically what's been happening is inside the home, all of the new hardwood floor that was put in popped off and they realize that they have a water problem. So what we're gonna do is put in footer pipe all the way around the interior perimeter and we'll put a sump pump in, we'll lift that up and send it out through the wall. So this is a job that you, the homeowner could do themselves really a straightforward. You can see how much room there is in the crawl space, lots of room. And what you need is a shovel. We like to use what we call a sharpshooter. You can see it's a 16 inch long by six inch wide spade at the end it has a handle at the other end and that's the perfect size for our trench we're going to dig a trench right down to the footer let's see if you can see it here let your eyes adjust it's kind of dark but yeah can you see there's the footer we're going to dig a hole right beside it a trench a couple of inches below that footer put gravel there and then our pipe and then more gravel to cover the area we'll bring that gravel right up to the grade so that Basically what we're doing is we're creating So basically what we're doing is we're creating an island, you know, for the center of this home. And as water rises up, now it has a place to go on both sides. It'll run over to the sump pump, sump basin, and the sump pump will lift it up, just like a little lift station. It'll lift it up, and then we'll drill right through this wall and bring the pipe out down into the ground. It'll tie into the downspout drain. So to start your excavation, basically what we want to do is find the footer. I'm just going to do this with one hand so that you can see it. We want to find the footer. It's right here. You can hear that shovel hitting it. Once we find that footer, then we can move our trench over and we're going to trench right along that footer all the way around the interior perimeter. So you can see pretty good here. Started my trench. Here's the footer. Remember, the footer is an 8 inch by 8 inch solid pour of concrete. That's the top of the footer. The block wall is the foundation that sits on the block or on the footer. So we want to put our pipe, you can see I'm down about two and a half, three inches below the top of the footer. We're going to put gravel in here and then our pipe and then more gravel, bring it back to grade. We're going to do this all the way around the entire perimeter. So again, I know where that footer is, so I can just pull the dirt right out. It goes quick. A few obstacles in your way, like cable, but other than that, piece of cake. Just make sure that you're deep enough to get a good base of gravel and be able to cover your pipe completely. Gravel is the key. Water will move through the gravel much faster than it will move through the pipe for many years. But you can see how far I am just, I mean, that was a minute. It doesn't take long. And then you just come back through just like you're outside and you just scrape out the excess. Remember that the footer pipe, the footer pipe runs level. And the way the system works, it floods up, and then you have a head of water for it to travel through. It does not have any fall. It follows the footer, and the footer of your house is level. So when you're digging, it's best to work backwards. Remember what we're using is a six inch wide shovel and it's either 14 or 16 inches long, has a handle at the end, and you just stick it down in the dirt, and you pull it over, and you lift it out. We need to find that footer. So find the footer. There's the footer, you can hear it. We want to be right beside that, and down two or three, four inches. Remember that the footer is eight inches by eight inches solid concrete, and it runs level. It was poured. That's why they call it the footer. And it runs around the entire perimeter of the house. So we can put this 
perforated pipe with gravel right beside it and it will drain the water away. Goes pretty quick. I like to work backwards on my right side because I have my shoulders a little stronger. But you can definitely do it on the left side. Whatever is comfortable for you. As you can see, that's a quick 10 feet just in a matter of seconds. And this wall is almost done. So you can see the trench where you can see that concrete. There's the footer runs all the way back and I'm just about ready to connect to the first part of the trench I showed you earlier just about a foot more but I wanted you to see the trench I mean how long did that take <laughs> five minutes to do one okay, wall so I'm ready to connect these two trenches and like I said you just shovel them together this dirt is nice and soft definitely something you could do yourself but you can see I've worked up a sweat and not saying it's like easy, but it's not that hard. It's something that you can definitely do yourself and save thousands and thousands. Even if you just dug the trench and had contractor come in and lay the pipe and the pump, you put in the rest, you'd save thousands and thousands. So keep that in mind for the do-it-yourselfer. So this wall is all done. <clears throat> Just need to scrape it clean. Get rid of a little bit of excess. Remember that. Remember that footer pipe runs level. Your footer is level. Block wall sits on a level surface. And the way the system works is, as water floods up, gets higher and higher into the trench that you dug, it begins to flow. And I promise you that it works great. Okay, so. You can see this wall's all done here in the back, all the way to the corner. We've got it all the way down to that end. And here, a line across, connecting the two trenches together. Sorry for the flashlights. <laughs> it's dark back here. Turns, comes around between the pier and the wall, connects to my trench. So this is what it looks like when you come out of the crawl space. Again, you know, that's pretty much done in there. There's maybe 10 more feet, take a little break. But we did all four walls, and you can see you do get dirty and sweaty, no doubt. But what a great project for the do-it-yourselfer to save some money. Okay, so it's time to set up the sump basin. We're gonna take a hacksaw, cut off these nipples. Good sharp saw cuts them right off. This will accept the footer pipe as it brings up the water into the sump basin. We've got two on both sides. So we'll cut those off. Next we're going to drill holes in the bottom. We're going to perforate the bottom of the pit so that in case water rushes in too quickly, the pit doesn't become a boat and lift up out of the ground. So next we're going to drill some holes in the bottom of the basin. that does is, is as water rushes into the crawl space, if for whatever reason it rushes in there, this can become a boat. The water can get underneath of it and lift it right up out of the soil. So we, give, we want the water to come into the basin. It comes in through here as well, but it has happened in the past many years ago. And we decided just to go ahead and perforate the bottom. You can also perforate around the sides if you'd like, but right now I think we've collected the water quite well and we just want to contain it and keep it in the basin. So next we'll set up the pit. So next we're going to set up our Zoller M53. I like to use Zollers. I think that they're the best pump on the market. Little Giant is also another pump. Uh, there's all kinds of pumps, but this one is a great pump. And the reason I like it is because it's got a single pole switch. And yeah, people say the, the switch goes bad, but you know, it lasts 10, 12 years. 
or longer <laughs> before that switch goes bad and nothing lasts forever so this also comes with a three-year warranty so you see that three years great pump inside the box you got the pump and you got your warranty information put that aside so we're going to start by setting up the pump itself we start with a male threaded inch and a half adapter that screws right into this port real simple you want to put that in there hand tight and then tighten it as tight as you can make it with your hand. Next, next we're going to go ahead and glue a small piece of pipe. We call this a riser because it's going to accept the check valve. And the check valve has arrows on it. It only allows water to flow one direction. We'll put a little bit of primer on here. Remember, primer is a messy thing. And really what it's doing is it's cleaning the fitting. And then we're gonna go ahead and put, next we'll put some glue on there. Good amount of glue. I like to use an Oatly Red. This is just a regular medium cement. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna bond this instantly. Give it a little twist and hold it for just a second. That's set. Next we'll go ahead and put the check valve on. Double check that your arrows, double check that your arrows are pointing upward. And use your handy dandy drill. Use your handy dandy drill, tighten it up. Perfect. And then make sure the rest of them are tight as well. The top one I'm going to loosen. The top one I loosened because when we put it in the pit, we're going to bring our riser up and then it'll turn and go out through the wall. We're ready to go down into the crawl space and install all of this. Okay, so you can see the hole. Chuck dug that hole for the sump basin. I'm going to go ahead and set it in there. And you can see the inlet line coming in. We actually went around the whole corner, but there was an old pump back here can't see it there it is there's an old pump we'd like to put that pit in the corner but those pipes are all in the way so you trench around the whole corner but you still bring the water over to your sump basin so remember we did a lot of work on the outside to get our pit ready because we want to it's hard to work down the crawl space try to do as much as possible on the outside that way you can easily install pits perfect level perfect height you can see the inlet line coming in over here and the nipple that I cut off the same thing on this side you see the the hole is at the perfect depth so now we're ready to go ahead and set our pump in there and the reason I'm doing that set the pump in now is I need to find the measurement to go through this wall right here remember we have to core to drill a hole a two inch hole through that wall so let's set the pump in there so the M53 it's a pretty heavy pump it's about 20 25 pounds and um, the m98 the one we use on the outside because it handles a whole lot more water it weighs about 35 pounds so it's quite much much heavier what we need to do is you can see the piece of pipe i'm just going to lay it across so i can get a measurement of which block i'm going to drill through from the outside making that measurement it's not that difficult where we're at this time. I can use those vents and transfer the measurement from here to the outside and core right through the wall. Okay, so now we're ready to core drill through the foundation wall. That is an eight inch solid block. So it's eight inches thick, you know, all the way across it. And we're gonna use the Bosch hammer drill. This is the tool that you've got to rent, or if you happen to have one, great, because you're gonna need it to get through this wall. So here's our hammer drill. You can see we use it a lot. And we're gonna use a two inch bit. This is diamond cord. Those are little diamond studs on the end of that thing. And what it does is it hammers and it turns at the same time. You know, it drills and hammers, so it should just go through there like butter, ha ha. Um, we'll set this up. I've already made the measurement from the inside. Pretty simple. We'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so I made the measurement from the inside. And basically I used if you can see it, I use the top of that vent. Let me lift up the camera. So I made the measurement from the inside using this vent, and it's exactly in this line right here. So what I'm going to do, this is the center of this center block, and it's straight down from the, where I made my measurement. Real simple. 
Let's go ahead and drill our hole and straight down from the top. Let's go ahead and get started right there. Okay, so there's the core. You can see it's a perfect two inch hole and that's the outer diameter of the inch and a half and it slides right inside. So I'm using a whole 10 foot piece and we'll cut that off to length both inside. You can see a 10 footer. We'll cut that off inside and outside when we're ready. Okay, so we've got our sump pump installed. We've got the riser coming up. You can see the M53. We've got a little riser coming to the check valve. Remember arrows tell you which way that water flow is. Then we've got another riser that comes up. And we've got our discharge going through the wall with a 90 on it. Now we're ready to go ahead and install and put the lid on and then we'll glue it all up. Okay, so we've got sump pump installed, sump basin, and the discharge coming out and going through the wall. We'll plumb that on the outside. It'll basically go straight down the outside of the wall and then it's going to go underground and we'll come out we'll use a pop-up about five or ten feet away and we will come back and hook it up to the downspout drain when that's installed so the other thing is that we're using slotted pipe with a fabric around it we've got a base of gravel underneath of that and now we're going to cover that you can see us bringing in the gravel you can bring it in by the bucket or you can bring it in by the bag, either one. It takes a great deal of gravel. I like to use the bags, because you can see we can throw those bags. They stay contained, and we can roll them around. It's the easiest way to get that gravel into the crawl space. Normally, we pour it through the vent, but these are decorative vents, and you can see the concrete blocks. These are actually four inch blocks. There's two of them, and they put the screen between the two, so we can't really pour or gravel through the vent. Makes it a little tougher, but you can still do it. Okay, so finally, on the sump basin and sump pump, remember that you do need a GFI outlet installed, preferably onto this wall right here, and you'll need an electrician for that, or you can do it yourself. When we install, we just put a temporary uh, extension cord, which can stay there for years and years. But when you go to sell the house, your inspector's going to say there cannot be a break from outlet to pump. So that means you can't use an extension cord. So a GFI outlet is needed. Um, either you can put it up here if you want. But in fact, they'll probably, they probably will put it up on the joist. And then you can take the plug and plug it directly in. But don't forget that you need to have an extension cord for power, temporary power. Okay, so here on the discharge, as it comes out through the wall, try to get as close as you can. Remember that you're putting a 90 on here. So you've got to have, it would be nice if you could get it right up to the wall, but a, an inch away is fine. Go ahead and cut that pipe off. And you kind of get bloody knuckles, but cut it off. Now we're able to plumb this. We'll glue this up, of course. We'll plumb this down. It'll go underground. It'll come out to a pop-up. So, a good amount of glue. And just push it on there. Kind of twist and hold it. Make sure you're pointing down. Twist and hold that. You can see we have a little play there. That works good. Then we're going to make the measurement down to the bottom. What we do is we just set the fitting down here. You know, on the ground and we make that measurement to the top the camera won't quite fit in there there we go make that measurement 
So I'm gonna glue it up. I'm gonna put the bottom fitting on first and then just force it right up inside there. There we go. Nice and tight. And take a look. So that's coming out of the wall. As you can see, and now we'll put our discharge line out coming out through this trench. And so here's the discharge. You can go as far away as you'd like. Remember that this is this discharge is actually going to tie into the downspout drain as that gets replaced, which is where it's supposed to go. So it would turn there at the wall and go across and, t and tie into the downspout. Here at the actual discharge, we're going to go ahead and glue a couple of fittings on here. First one is a little donut. And this actually is an interesting fitting because it only you can only get that at a plumbing supply store. If you can't find it, you can welcome to give me a call. I can help you get one. Um, but that it goes from inch and a half PVC to thin walled three inch, and it, it's definitely a fitting that you got to look for. But we'll go ahead and glue that up. Nice. And then we'll stick the three inch on there. Perfect. And then finally, we're going to put this little grate there and we're going to put a set screw right here to hold it in place because the pump's powerful. It can push that off of there. And that's it. We'll go ahead and cover that up. Next, we're going to go ahead and do the moisture barrier. So backfill and you're done. This is the discharge from the sump pump. And you can see that it comes right through the wall. Perfect hole, inch and a half pipe. Bring it down underground so it looks good and discharge as far away as you can. Remember this will be, this is just temporary. It will be attached to the downspout in the future. Okay, so we're throwing the gravel into the crawl space. Remember, you could bring it in a truckload or you could put it in the bag, whichever you prefer. I like to let the guys use the bag. I think it's easier for them. It costs us a little bit more, but it's a lot easier for, the, for us because there's so many bags of gravel to put underneath of the crawl space. Um, again, this is about 2,000 square feet, and it's going to take, we've got 50 bags here. We're probably going to get 20 more. We may need more, but whatever it takes, it takes. It doesn't really matter. But this is, this is the hardest part of the job, and it's going to take the most labor. <clears throat> Definitely, you know, it, I've shown you videos where I've done this all by myself in the past. Same size crawl space. It can be done, and if you just keep a smile, I promise you that it goes a lot faster. Okay, so we're bringing gravel in by the bag, and what we've done is we've put a little base underneath. Now we're going to go ahead and pour the rest of the gravel over top of the system, over top of the pipe, and bring that to grade. And it is, it is fun. It's a lot of work. And these guys did a great job. You can see all these bags of gravel. There's a lot of bags back here, but there's too many. So <laughs> I've got to move them back to get to where we're going. So basically, rip open your bag of gravel and just pour it out. Or if you're using a bucket, you would pour the bucket. We just need a couple of inches to bring it back to grade and we're in good shape. But I got to move these bags first because they're in the way. But you know what's really funny is that as hard as moving the gravel is, which they're about 40 pound bags, um, you can throw them, they, they stay together. The hard part's opening them. <laughs> Some of them open really quick. And others, as you can see, it takes a lot of your energy just to open it up. And of course you get those comments, well take a knife with you. I don't know if you can see my hands and how dirty I am and how much sand is on me and dirt, but using a knife, it really does slow down the process dramatically. So, we pour it out. Get all the little pieces out, spread it around, and you keep on going. But that's what it looks like. You can see the 
gravel as it goes all the way back. And again, there's the pipe with a base underneath. It goes all the way down to the other end. So that's what your finish should look like. You can see a gravel comes right up to grade and it filled that trench. We've got you know our pipe underneath. And you can see all the way back, as far as that light will let you see, there's a wall back there. It's all done clear across the back wall and half of the other wall. And we're coming down. I know I'm moving fast there. It's hard to see all that. But if you can see the guys, they're just right there at that corner. We're almost done with this crawl space. And of course, such is the case. Chuck's bring or to that Chuck or Joe. Joe Joe's bringing a, a bag. You can see come so close, but we still need a little bit more gravel. <laughs> it always works out like that. There's always never enough and you have to bring one more bag. So he'll pour that in there. Yeah. And this whole side is done all the way to the sump basin. And we just have maybe 20 or 30 more feet to cover. I think we're out of gravel, but I'm not sure. We'll check it here in just a second. Yeah, Joe's using his knife. He's putting it, ripping it. It's a habit. <laughs> and again, the real secret is just keep a smile, man, because come on around towards me. Yep. Just keep the smile because it'll be a whole lot more easier and fun. That, that didn't sound right. More easier. It'll be a whole lot better to uh, keep your smile than and stand back here and cuss and swear and, you know, dang thing, didn't do this, dang thing. But just smile and laugh at it. You'll go a lot faster. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.